Hi, and welcome to Crafts with Ash DIY and Decor. My name is Ashley, and today I am bringing you 10 really amazing fall DIYs that you have to try for this season. First, if you haven't done so already, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell. And in the drop down menu, click all so you're notified about all notifications. I upload videos a few times a month, and coming into the fall season, you know I have a lot of fun content coming your way, so definitely stay tuned. So, today I put together my most favorite fall DIYs from 2021, but they definitely could apply to this year, so these are a must do. So I hope you enjoyed the video. It's kind of a long one, so get your pumpkin spice latte, sit down, and enjoy these DIYs. This first DIY, I'm going to use these wood planks that I got from the Dollar Tree, and they have a little pumpkin cut out at the top. Now, if you missed my Dollar Tree fall haul video, I will have it linked in the description box below, but you're definitely going to want to check it out to see what other brand new items I found this year for the fall season. After I removed the hangers from each one of my boards, I used one of the boards to measure the top, the cutout part of the other one. We need each one of our pieces to be the same height, so you need to make sure that you measure against each other. Then after that, I took a knife and I'm just gonna score it multiple times on my line and bend it back and forth until I'm able to snap it. Now, I did go ahead and use a ruler to make sure that I was cutting a straight line. After I broke it in two pieces, I took my sanding block and I sanded each one down to make sure the ends were nice and smooth. After that, I took my other long wooden plank and I used the part that I cut off at the top to measure the top of that one. Now, the reason why I have it upside down is because I know that's a straight line, so I wanted to go ahead and trace that. Then I did the same thing and just scored it with my knife multiple times until I was able to break that one off as well. After I broke it apart, I cleaned up my edges and again I took my sanding block and sanded both of them down. Next, it was time to put this all together. So what I did was I laid one of the longer pieces down, and then by using wood glue and hot glue, I, I glued the shorter piece along the side of the longer piece. Now, we're making a box, so you need to make sure to glue this little piece, the cutout piece, on its side so that the pumpkin is sideways and not straight up and down. I'm just deciding to put it all together on its side, which you'll see here. So after I do that side, I move to the other, and I do the same thing. I use a combination of wood glue and hot glue to glue my sides down. Now I did have to hold each side down after applying the glue, that way it had time to set up and I would hold it in place. After both of my sides were glued, I just took my wood glue and ran a bead through the corner to go ahead and give it extra support. Then I used my finger to push it into the little grooves or any little gaps that there may have been. Next, I applied wood glue and hot glue on the top of those little pieces, and then I'm going to put that second long board on the top. Hey. 
Now you wanna make sure that all of your edges and sides are all lined up and flush with each other. And again, you're gonna to have to hold this down until the glue sets up. To give my box even more support, I decided to glue these little wooden blocks on the inside of my boards. Now you can see that the top long board is bowed. It is curving outward. So I do do something about that in just a little bit. And putting these blocks on do help a little, but I am gonna have to end up adding a bottom. But to do these blocks, I just glued one down to the top, one down to the bottom in every corner of my box. Now I do find that it is easier to flip my box on its side like that and start gluing all of the pieces, but of course you couldn't see it from that angle, so I went ahead and glued all my pieces. After that, I wanted to darken this box just a little bit. Personally, I'm not a fan of light wood. I like darker wood. So I just took my Waverly Antique Wax and a chippy brush and I'm just going to dry brush that all over all the sides of my box. Now you do want to make sure to follow the pattern of the wood grain. So I'm going back and forth on this side, but on the sides, the smaller sides, I'll be going up and down because that's the way the wood grain is going. I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to my YouTube channel. And if you're new, thank you so much for choosing to stop by. And also, if you're coming over from Liz's channel, welcome, and I really hope that you love what you see today. If you're returning, thank you so much for all of your support. I've really been loving getting to all these DIYs and sharing them all with you. And stay tuned because fall and Halloween and Christmas are, of course, my favorite. So there's going to be a lot of content coming your way. Okay, so to fix the problem with the bowing board, I am going to add a bottom. So I took some leftover foam board that I had from a different DIY and I'm tracing my box on top of that and then I'm going to use my knife to cut it out. Now as you saw, it did not cover the whole bottom so I do end up having to piece a few of the pieces of foam board together but that's okay because you're not going to see it and the inside is going to be all filled anyways. So it doesn't have to look pretty, it just has to get the job done. Now the trick to doing this is I had to hold the bowing piece tight to, you can see I'm really pushing it, to make sure that it stops being bowed and that I'm gluing it as straight as possible. One way to avoid this is just to not use a board that is bowed. So if you do this project, just try to make sure to pick up two straight boards. I did not realize that when I bought them or else I would have gotten a straight one. <laughs> but you know, this is just a good way to show you how you can fix things like this. And it was pretty easy to fix, I just had to make sure that I pushed it ver the side that was bowed very hard onto the foam board, that way it would glue straight onto the foam board if that makes sense. So all I did was stick the foam board on the bottom and this box is flipped upside down. So, and then I just ran a bead of hot glue and then I'm going to push it, push it down really hard. Now I apologize about my angle, I did not realize I was a little cut off here, but that's basically all I did. I did it on both sides and then you're going to see that I do take some little pieces of foam board and cover the rest of the bottom and that's basically it. I'm just adding a ton of glue to make sure that my bottom stays in place.
Next, I took this little stencil that I got from Dollar General and I cut out the word that I wanted to use and then I poked out all of the little pieces that don't belong. And then by using some painter's tape, I did tape it down in the bottom right hand corner of my box. Now, the last time I used these stencils from Dollar General, they bled. So because I was nervous to do that again, what I did was traced them on with a pencil and then I colored them in with a black Sharpie marker and that worked really well. I was just afraid to use my paint again because this there would be no way to fix that besides painting the entire box and I did not want to do that. So I just took the safe route and traced and colored it in. Next, I decided to lightly sand over my word so that way the color wasn't such a bold black. It kind of dulled it down a little bit. After that, it was time to add some handles. So I took this nautical rope that I got from the Dollar Tree and I tied a knot on one end of the rope and there are already holes on the sides of the board because this was supposed to hang. So I'm just using those holes as a guide to where I want to glue my knots. So what I did was I made one knot and then I glued it down over that hole and then I decided how long I wanted my handle to be and I made another knot to glue on the other hole and then cut off the excess rope. Now you do want to make sure to put a generous amount of hot glue or even a super glue like E6000 or that super glue from the Dollar Tree. That way it gives these handles an extra hold. After I got one side glued down, I took another piece of rope and I tied a knot on one end and then I compared it to the handle I already had glued on and then tied another knot and did the same thing and glued it to the other end of my box.
Now that my box was built and ready to go, it was time to fill it. So I took these three mason jars that I already had on hand, and I was going to start putting florals in it, and then I decided that they needed to be raised up a little bit. So I took these wood pieces from the crafter square section to use as risers. Next, I did put some foam around, but it really wasn't to use as foam. It was just basically to fill empty spots. And next, I'm going to take some extra Dollar Tree bags and we all know I have a ton of those and I'm just going to fill in the spots around the jars so I don't have to use as many floral pieces after that it was time to start filling this in with florals now to do this all I did was just pop the flowers or the leaves or whatever I'm using off of the stems I didn't use any wire cutters or anything I just popped them off and then I arranged them how I liked now this did take a little while for me to do so we're just gonna speed that right up <laughs> then in the jars itself I am going to put little fake tea lights the battery operated ones from the Dollar Tree and now I have a super cute fall centerpiece that my mom is actually going to put on her dining room table now the neat thing is is because this says blessed you could really fill this all season long with the seasonal florals so you could do sunflowers you can do poinsettias or kind of Christmassy florals you can do spring ones summer anything that you love and I absolutely love how this box came out it was super easy to make and I love that I got to use two of the new wood planks from the Dollar Tree what do you think and use my little, little scraper to brandish the words on top of my transfer tape. After that, I put my fall sweet fall decal in the middle of this really cute wooden charger. Now, I got this wooden charger from Michael's after season, so it was like a couple bucks, but I do know that Dollar Tree sells ones just like it. After that, I laid out all of these little leaves around my fall sweet fall decal just to kind of see where I want them to be positioned. Then once I was confident in where they were, I started taking them off with my transfer tape and I put them on. Now at first I started using my transfer vinyl, but then I realized that I could literally just peel this off of each sheet like a sticker and then just add them on. So you'll see me switch. And then that way I didn't really have to waste my transfer paper either. So as you can see, this is super easy to put together. I just started taking the leaves off and putting them on around my wording. And you can see that I kind of peeled a few up and moved them around so I'm not pushing them down all the way, just like I would with regular stickers before I got my Cricut. And if you don't have a Cricut, you can do what I did and just use stencils or stickers or rub on transfers or you can even print things off of your computer and Mod Podge them on. You could either even use window decals. There are so many other options if you don't have a Cricut. So after I got all of my decals put on my plate, I wanted to distress this a little bit to give it more of a rustic look. So I dry brushed some of my white Waverly chalk paint over my plate. Now again, I wanted to go in the direction of the wood grain and you can see I started off going the wrong way and then I started going up and down and I did distress over my words as well that way it gave that an antique look too Then to bring in that darker color, I took my Waverly Antique Wax and I dry brushed that over my charger as well. 
after that this plate is complete I thought that this turned out super super neat you can put a hanger on the back and hang it up but I'm just going to use one of those plate holders that you can get from to the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to display it now I did go ahead and put some Mod Podge over the leaves and the words now typically I don't think with Cricut you have to but being my first time I just wanted to be a hundred percent sure that these were going to stay down so I decided to go ahead and give it that extra hold but I absolutely love how this came out I think I did pretty good for my first Cricut project but you tell me what do you think DIY I'm going to use this mini cutting board that I got from Michaels now it was on sale for like 70% off so I got a great deal now because the front of it is actually like wood burned in and raised I was not able to just paint over it so I flipped it around to the back and the first thing I'm going to do is take a baby wipe and dip that in some Waverly antique wax and use that to faux stain the back and the sides of my cutting board. Next I took my chippy brush and I dipped it in some ivory chalk paint and I'm going to dry brush that all over my cutting board. Then to blend everything all together, I took my sanding sponge and sanded my cutting board down really well. After that, I took four regular size craft sticks and I'm lining it up because I want to make a little board in the middle. So after I had them all lined up how I liked, I went ahead and took a smaller craft stick and I'm going to hot glue those that across the big ones to help them all attach together. Now I did start off with four craft sticks, but you're gonna see that I actually add a fifth one because I wanted it to be just a little bit wider. But before I realized I wanted to do that, I just used that other craft stick to draw a straight line, and then I used my scissors to cut off the rounded parts. This is your friendly reminder to please give this video a thumbs up. Not only does it really help my channel to grow, but it also tells YouTube that you're loving my content and that you want to see more. So hit that like button for even more DIY inspiration. After I had the ends cut down on one side, I flipped it over and did the same thing on the other. Basically, I'm just cutting this down so all of the rounded edges were cut off. Next, I took my sanding block and I'm going to sand all of the edges so they're nice and smooth. Next, I took my Waverly Antique Wax again and my chippy brush, and I just dry brushed that on that little board that I made. Now, I wanted the natural wood to come through as well, so that's why I didn't really go heavy on the Waverly Wax, but I just wanted a little bit of dimension and distressing. Distressing. 
Then to help it all blend in, I went ahead and sanded it down. Now before I glued my wood piece onto my cutting board, I took these words that I also cut out from my Cricut and I weeded them and then I used transfer tape to go ahead and apply them to my board. Again, this was super easy to do. This was only my second cut. <laughs> so I thought for that matter, this actually came out pretty cute. One thing I really loved about this was in the Cricut, it literally told me which color to put in. So it would say cut number one, and then it'll show me what the cut is going to be so I could decide which one of my colors I wanted to put on. Now, I got these images from Cricut Design Space, and I really loved using these, It's but you do have to pay a membership fee, but I'm telling you, it was totally worth it because I already see so many different projects that I could make in the future by using that service. Again, this video is not sponsored by Cricut. I am not getting paid to do this or receiving any kind of free products. I am just sharing my experience as a newbie Cricut user, just in case you're sitting there on the fence and considering getting a Cricut. I'm telling you, it's really not as hard as people think. And I don't know why I was so intimidated, but as you can see, this part is super easy as well. So I just peeled it off and then I just placed down all of my pieces on my board. Now I am looking at this image in the design space on my laptop so I make sure that I place them in the right way because I'm such a visual person I need to see what it looks like so if you want to do that method you can do that too. Super super easy. After I had all my words placed down, I went ahead and hot glued my little board in the middle of my cutting board. Then I wanted to add a little bit more detail, so I took these little puffy stickers and I painted four of them with black acrylic paint. After they were dry, I hot glued one in each corner of my little wooden board. Lastly, I took some raffia and I tied it in a bow and I hot glued it to the bottom of the handle of my cutting board. I really love how this came out. I love all of the little details and the texture and I love the fact that I got to use my Cricut one more time to make this little DIY. This really did not cost me a lot because like I said, I got the actual cutting board from Michaels when it was on sale so I'm so happy I got to use that as well but I thought that this was a great decor piece you can set it up in your kitchen or a dining area or it does have the hanger on it still so you could even hang it as well so I really love how this came out but what do you think I'm going to start off by using this plastic tray that I picked up from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to give it about two and a half really good coats of ivory chalk paint. And when I say two and a half, what I mean is two full coats and then just touch up any places that need some extra paint or may have gotten scratched or the paint came off.
After it was dry, I took my ruler and I stuck it in the middle of my tray. I made a pencil mark on the top of my ruler and on the bottom, and then I moved my ruler up and down using the lines that I had previously drawn as my guide. So I'm going to make this look like shiplap lines. So I'm just gonna go all the way down the middle of my tray. So I'm just gonna work my way up and then my way down. I know it looks like that these lines are not straight, but they are, I promise. <laughs> After that, I'm gonna take my finger and I'm going to rub over each one of these lines to really give it that ship lap look. I've tried a lot of different methods, but this pencil method and then you rub it with your finger works the best for me. After that, I'm gonna take this little chunky brush, and you know me, I love to make things look rustic. So I'm going to dry brush some Waverly Antique Wax all over this tray. I'm really gonna pay attention to the edges around the tray and also the corners because I want those to be a little darker and to highlight them a little bit more. After that, I'm gonna take these 16 millimeter beads that I got from Amazon, and the link is in the description box below, and I am simply going to hot glue these all around the top part of my tray. Now I'm making sure to glue the beads on so the holes of the beads are on the sides, and then what I'm doing is actually putting a line of glue down, and I'm also gonna start putting a little dot of glue on the side of each bead so it connects to the one before it. So I am just going to go all the way around this tray. Now you can see that some of these beads are different colors. That's okay because we are actually going to paint those. So even though this DIY was so easy to do, it was a little time consuming. So just take your time glue all of your beads on, put on some music, a movie, <laughs> watch something fun, a snack even maybe. <laughs> but I'm just making sure that these are really glued down. After I had these all glued down, I even went in between the beads and just put a little dab of glue in each one of them in between. So here you can see that I'm just squirting a little dab of glue in between each one of those beads to give them a little extra support. So I'm just gonna go around. After that, I took my ivory chalk paint again, and I am messily, <laughs> if that makes sense, painting these beads. So I am not going for full coverage on these beads. I am just painting, I'm kind of, but I'm doing a little bit more than dry brushing, if that makes sense. So I am going in with a smaller brush. The foam brush was just a little too big. So I'm gonna go in with a uh, smaller brush and I'm just going to paint all these beads. Now this dupe comes from an inspiration from Walmart and on the Walmart tray, they actually had these beads very, very distressed. So what I'm gonna do now is take some fine grit sandpaper and I am just going to sand these beads down. So that way a lot of the natural wood comes through from underneath. And I probably wasn't even using the right sandpaper. I should have probably got even stronger um, or harder sandpaper, but I just used what I had, but I just totally distressed these beads so you can see a lot of the natural wood come through. And that's why I said earlier, you don't really need to go for full coverage when you paint these beads because we were just going to distress them anyways. So after my tray was complete, it was time to pull out one of these new calendars. And from this calendar, I'm gonna use the September page and I'm simply going to cut out this truck. Now I am going to cut around it so I have just the truck and try to get all the white around it. And then I do go around the pumpkins and the stems and I also cut out the window as well. So all I'm gonna be using here is this truck. Now, this is where the tray kind of switches up a little bit from the dupe because I did not have the exact image they used, so I just used my own, but I think it came out pretty close besides that. After that, I printed off Welcome Fall from my Cricut, and of course you can use stickers or stencils or rub-on letters. And now I'm just kind of working with my positioning here. And I wanted the welcome and fall to kind of be offset, and I wanted the truck to be under the fall, but obviously offset from that too. So I'm just going to figure out where I want my tray or everything on my tray to be. 
So I'm just arranging my words, arranging the truck, making sure it's all lined up. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and push my letters down by using this little tool from Cricut. And then it came off easy peasy. Now, before I put this transfer table paper on my tray, I did fuzz it on my pants a little bit so it wasn't so sticky. After that, I went ahead and applied some Mod Podge to the bottom of my tray, and then I decided just to go ahead and go over the letters as well. And then I put my truck right on top of the Mod Podge. And then I'm going to put one more coat of Mod Podge all over my truck and the letters. That way it protects the letters and the paper. Now this calendar paper is extremely, extremely thin. So I always get wrinkles, but it doesn't really bother me because I, you know, I think it just adds to the rustic look. So I think it's fine. So now to distress it down a little bit more, I'm taking my little sanding block and I'm just sanding the letters down so they're not so bold and black. And then I'm also kind of doing that to the truck, but you want to be very careful when you go over the truck. All right, so the tray did have handles and they were like wire black handles. So I was trying to think, okay, what can I use? And I found these little easels at the Dollar Tree. So I thought, okay, I'm going to use these. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. If the tray at Walmart did not have handles, I would not have put handles on this. This was a pain, <laughs> but for the sake of the dupe and getting it to look like the one from Walmart, I'm going to add the, ha the handles, but I'll be honest, I'm probably going to take them off. So the first thing I did was use my wire cutters to cut off the top part of each uh, one of the easels, and this was kind of tar this was kind of hard. It it was just not an easy snap with the wire cutters. This was it was tough. So what you have to do is you just kind of have to keep scoring it with your wire cutters, kind of just snip, 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 and then you bend it back and forth until finally the top breaks off. So that's what I'm doing. Um, I mean, it was a good workout, <laughs> I guess. So finally I got one end off. So I'm pushing really, really hard. And you can see where it is kind of like, you know, making a mark, but you do just kind of go back and forth until they break off. So finally, after I had both of my easels cut down, I thought that it might be best to add some duct tape around the, the bottoms of my, like the ends of the little easels, because it would help have something to adhere to the tray. So after I had the duct tape on, I flipped over my tray, I added a ton of hot glue. And another reason why I added the duct tape was because metal and hot glue don't get along, so I thought it would stick better to the duct tape. So now I'm just going to just reinforce it with even more duct tape, and you do kind of have to hold it there until the, drew, the, the glue sets up. Now, this is when I say I just would not have gone through any of this if there weren't handles on the original piece because it was kind of a pain to figure out how to attach these without, you know, I couldn't staple these in because this is plastic. But if you have any ideas on how I could have attached this wire handle to this plastic tray, please let me know because I was honestly racking my brain. And as you saw, I did put some permanent glue there to kind of help it hold. But it just, it, you're going to see what I have to end up doing, and it was just not good. <laughs> so the handles really weren't sticking very well, so I did have to put some duct tape on the bottom. Now, obviously this is red duct tape, and it does not go with this tray at all. I don't know if I had some silver or some white. Now, I guess I could have painted the duct tape. I just thought of that. But you can't see it from the bottom, but I know it's there, and it does stick out. Like the handles just would not stick no matter what glue I used or what tape I used. But nonetheless, that's what I ended up doing on both sides. So I took my second easel and again, I'm just going to wrap the ends, the points uh, with some duct tape. That way it helps to adhere the handle down better to the plastic. And I did make sure to go over the point as well, like cover the end. Then again, I'm going to flip my tray over, add some hot glue and that permanent glue, that um, super glue. And the 
other tray actually did have some feet, so I did decide to take some 20 millimeter beads and add a bead on every corner, kind of like on the inside of my tray. To do this, I did just use some hot glue, and even though it really does look like an eyesore underneath, it the handles are actually functional. I could actually use the handles. So the only thing that was different was on the handles on the Walmart tray, they did have beads or some kind of spindle or something, but I just did not want to fight and try to use my wire cutters to cut it open again. So I just decided to skip that. But otherwise, I really love how this tray came out. Came out. Like I said, I might go ahead and take off the handles, but either way, I'm in love. my second dupe I am kind of getting my inspiration from something I saw at Big Lots my mom wanted a new door hanger for her front door for fall and actually she described it and then I happened to find what she was looking for on the Big Lots website and again I had the stuff to make it so the first thing I'm going to do is start off with this wooden pumpkin again from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to use my scraper to pop off those leaves I did not end up using these leaves in this DIY but I knew I could use them in the future so I saved them I was also trying to save these letters the, or these words and you see how well that turned out <laughs> but using my scraper really did help a lot so after I had all of the pieces off of my pumpkin I chose just to flip it over on its back and I am going to fill the holes so I just use some of my Dollar Tree spackling to do that and then once the spackle dry I sanded it down that way it was nice and smooth and ready for me to paint so for this first pumpkin out of three we are going to be painting each of the pumpkins three different colors so this first one is going to be ivory now I am also using three different sizes of pumpkins so you are going to see that as well but for the first one like I said I gave it a good coat of ivory chalk paint this is the second one I'm using and it is a jack-o-lantern and of course I had to pull off the 3d mouth and then I flipped it over I cut off the little string there the ribbon and again I'm going to cover my holes because I'm not going to actually be using any of the holes then I'm going to sand it down and this time I'm actually going to paint this in agave because my mom is more blue toned in her house and outside if you remember from our front porch makeover she had a lot of blues so I am going to use that in the actual inspiration in the one for Big Lots it was like a green so that would be the change that I made here so once I gave that a paint of agave I put that to the side and I grabbed the bigger pumpkin and I am just prying off this little metal leaf I am going to be using that leaf in this DIY so I am going to keep it close and then I decided I wanted to take my sand sponge and just sand all that glitter off so right now I'm doing it over my trash can that's why you couldn't see it uh, that way it didn't you know shed all over everything <laughs> next again I'm going to fill in my holes sand it down and I am actually going to paint this in the pumpkin orange paint from Waverly. So the colors I'm using are ivory, agave, and pumpkin, and they are all chalk paints from Waverly. And I really got away with just doing one coat on each one of these pumpkins. Now, as you can see, I did not do the stems. So for the stems, I'm going to use my nutmeg apple barrel paint, and I'm gonna do that for all of my stems. I'm going to make sure that I have full coverage on the stems and then I'm going to paint each of them. The cool thing I really loved about these pumpkins is that they all had different shaped stems. So I thought that it made each one look even more unique. So after I painted my stems, it was time to make these look like pumpkins. So what I did was I took my Waverly Antique Wax and a small detail brush and I'm just drawing those pumpkin lines. I'm following the shape of the pumpkin. I'm doing the little 
um, like the curves. And I am also going around the perimeter too. That way it highlighted those as well. Now the Big Lots pumpkins, they were 3D, but I didn't have any more of those 3D pumpkins. So I'm just kind of making it look you know, have the illusion of it being 3D and I'm just doing my best <laughs> to give it that illusion. So like I said, I'm just dry brushing that antique wax all around it. And then I'm gonna go a little bit in the middle as well to give it even more detail and highlighting. So as you can see, I'm just, you know, kind of filling in wherever it, it looks like it needs. Then I grabbed my blue one and I'm going to do the same thing. And you can see that I'm just following the curves and the bumps that are already on each one of the pumpkins. And each one of them is a different shape. So they are all going to look a little different. So, and then again, I'm just going to go over this entire thing with little strokes of the Waverly Antique Wax to give it even more dimension. And it was super easy to do. I actually really enjoy doing stuff like this. It's just, you know, it's painting, and I really have enjoyed doing that. Then I'm going to grab my orange pumpkin, and I'm going to do the same thing. And this time I'm actually using my finger to kind of rub it in. And I wish I would have thought to do that on the other two because I liked the look this gave. It made it look kind of more, I don't know, kind of more blended, I guess. And I don't know, I think this one came out the best out of all of them. So I would say if you're gonna do this, definitely use your finger to help blend this these lines in. I just thought that it helped with like the shadowing, it made it look realistic. Again, it could be this one. I thought this one looked best because it is actually orange too. So that could be it as well. But as you can see, I'm using the points of the pumpkin and I'm using the lines that are already there to go ahead and just follow the curves of the pumpkin. And again, I'm paying attention to the edges. And then I am going down and I did this on the other two uh, pumpkins as well, but I'm kind of just adding some shading and highlighting to the bottom of those pumpkins too. So then I'm just going to go in between each one of the little sections and add some um, highlighting there too. And again, I'm using my finger to go ahead and blend it in. I really loved the way that this one turned out. Like I said, I think this one looks the best out of all of them. So after that was done, I took this little wood plank that I got from the Dollar Tree, it's just a little wood piece, and it's the rectangle, and I'm giving it a faux stain by dipping a wipe into my Waverly Antique Wax, and I'm just doing the front and the sides, the back is not gonna be seen. Then I'm gonna dry brush my ivory paint. I didn't even dip this, paint, this brush back into the paint after I was finished painting the pumpkin. I just used whatever was on the brush, and I'm just dry brushing over that little wood piece. Next, I'm going to take my crocodile tool, and this actually makes holes in wood and metal and different materials, and I just punched two holes. And then I took this little metal welcome sign that I pulled off of another DIY and gave it a good coat of white chalk paint. After that, it was time to glue that welcome word on to the wooden sign. And again, like I said earlier, metal and hot glue don't mix. So I'm using that permanent or that super glue and hot glue. So that way I can adhere this word onto this wooden plaque. And I did kind of do it at an angle because that's what it looked like on the original piece from Big Lots. So I just went ahead and glued it down. So after I make sure that all of my, or that my word is completely glued down, I just decided I wanted to distress it a little bit more. Then I'm going to take the blue pumpkin, and this one is going to be the middle pumpkin. And I'm gonna put my plank on top, and then by using some twine, that's actually how I'm gonna attach this to the pumpkin. So I'm going to take my twine, put it through the back of the wood piece, tie a few knots on top of each other to make it one big knot, or look like it was one big knot, and then I'm going to wrap it around the stem of that blue pumpkin and do the same thing. I'm going to tie a couple knots so that way this is on my, uh, my pumpkin, this little sign. And there we go, and then I am going to adjust it. And again, it was kind of angled on the pumpkin, so I am going to glue it down like that. And I did also tack those little knots down with hot glue as well. And there we go. 
So that is what our middle pumpkin is going to look like. Next, I'm gonna take that metal leaf that I got off that one big pumpkin originally, and I'm just gonna hot glue it to the stem. Now, I always buy multiples of things, so I did happen to have more metal leaves leaves because I had more of those orange pumpkins so I used those to put on the other ones as well and then I just decided that it needed a little bit more highlighting and um, dimension so I'm just adding a little bit more in with my paintbrush and my Waverly Antique Wax. Then I grabbed the other two leaves and went ahead and put those on the other two pumpkins. So after I got the orange pumpkin done, I went ahead and glued the leaf on the white one and then again just took my brush and gave it a little bit more detail and highlighting. Then it was time to assemble our sign. So what I did was I lined each one of my pumpkins up and the white one is on top, the blue one is in the middle and then I flipped them upside down. Then I took some of this nautical rope and I used almost a whole strand of it. And by using this super glue and my hot glue, I'm going to glue the rope in the on the back of each one of my pumpkins. Now I did kind of cut it off, but at the top, I did I did leave some slack there so you can hang it and it is just one piece. So it starts at the end, goes all the way up, around and down. So I know this is not two separate pieces. This is all the same piece of um, nautical rope. So after I get the first one glued on, I just moved to the second one and I'm trying to keep the, the rope very straight so that way it lays really nice. And there we go. And again, I did push these down, waited, kind of waited for them to dry. Then after I got the third or the second one done, I moved to the third one and did the same thing. And after that was done, I went ahead and cut off the, the uh, leftover rope. So I really love how this sign came out. My mom loved it too, and she really loved the colors. She loved the blue instead of the green. So here's a look at the one from Big Lots. So like I said, those are 3D. $14, not bad, but I just wanted to give it a try. What do you think? This last dupe was another one that my mom saw at Hobby Lobby and she asked me if I could make it and I really wanted to attack this one. I just thought I totally could make it. So I'm using four different signs for this and they are all different heights because in the Hobby Lobby one they were all different heights. So first one I'm going to use is this uh, autumn sign that or fall sign and I had to pry off that um, frame this was kind of tough but then I I got a system and what I did was used a knife actually that little scraping knife right there that tool and that really helped so you're gonna see the first thing we're gonna do is prep all of our box boards and these are all box signs so after I get the front frame off I am going through and sanding it down so it's smooth next I'm using this little board from earth the sign from Easter and I'm just going to sand all of the glitter down and then I'm going to use this other sign and these are two different sizes now they obviously are not going to have these Easter ones but they do have something like this in stores now for fall Next, I'm going to use this gather sign, but I don't actually need the gather part, so this was so simple to take off. I just put my little um, scraper underneath and I pried it off. Next, I gave each one a couple coats of ivory chalk paint. Now I do have these lined up how I'm going to arrange them. So I did the biggest wider one first, then the square, then the taller rectangle, and then the even taller rectangle. Now those two smaller ones did have hangers on the back, so I did have to pry those off as well. So next it was time to, of course, distress these. So by using that little chunky brush, I'm gonna dry brush over each one of these boards with my Waverly Antique Wax. And I'm just going to make sure to really pay attention to the edges and the sides of these as well because I really wanted to highlight those 
and to kind of give it that chippy wood look and that rustic look. So this sign was so big it was hard for me to keep it in frame so that's why a little bit's going to be cut off here and there. So, but I am definitely trying my best. Now, if I got a little heavy-handed with the Waverly Antique Wax, I just used my um, my foam brush with the ivory paint on it, and I just kind of went over it just to kind of dull it down a little bit. But I went in between using the ivory paint and the Waverly Antique Wax until I got the look I was going for. So I'm just working on it until I like it. And like I said, I really loved how this came out. I think it actually came pretty darn close to the original. <laughs> so now I'm just kind of taking away some of that brown because I realized it was just a little too much. So now it's time to arrange all these. Now, as you can tell, the frame of these box signs not that are not that thick, so I decided to add some tumbling tower blocks to each one on the inside. That way it gave it more support and something to hold on to. So I just hot glued the tumbling tower blocks to the inside of the signs, but they're so they're flush up against the top of the frame. I really hope that makes sense. <laughs> so after I got the first one done, it was time to hot glue this board on top of the second one. So I'm just adding some hot glue and I'm going to place it on top of the rec or on the square one off to the side. So on the side of my my box sign there. And I, again, I have to hold it down until the glue sets. Next, I took the rectangular sign, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna add some tumbling tower blocks so it has something to adhere to. I'm gonna add a good amount of hot glue and then hot glue that one to the other side of the smaller sign. Now, you do wanna make sure that at the bottom, and I'm sorry, I know it's cut off, but you wanna make sure it's all even so it stands straight. Next, I turned the whole thing over, and now I'm going to add some tumbling tower blocks to the inside of that third little rectangle, and I'm going to just hot glue those on, and then once I have all of those pieces hot glued, I'm going to flip it over and hot glue that on top of the taller box sign. And again, like I said, you want to make sure that you keep this all lined up at the bottom. So it stands up straight and it's not wobbly. There we go. So and now I'm going to go through and just add some hot glue where I see necessary just to give it a little extra support. All right, so now it is time to add some more distressing. And in the one from Hobby Lobby, there was just like random strokes of Waverly Antique Wax. So what I'm doing is just going around the edges of my each one of these boards to make them pop a little bit more then you're going to see that I just add random strokes of the antique wax um in the middle of each one of these boards too because that's how it was in that in the original one so there you go I'm just making random strokes and then I'm uh brushing them on with my finger kind of rubbing it with my finger making them all blend in I really do think that this touch like really brought all of these to life. I really love this. This piece came out so cute. I really want to take it with me when I move, but I made it for my mom. <laughs> so I did notice that that big square, or the rectangle, the first board we did was not, it was just kind of flimsy. So what I'm doing is actually adding tumbling tower blocks kind of like as a stand to the back of the frame on that one. And I, I know I cut it off here, but I ended up adding three to help hold it up and that really helped. So it just gave it some extra support. Now I did forget while I was doing this, I wanted to paint that ivory and I forgot, but I do end up going back. Then with my Cricut, I printed out some letters, but again, you can do this with stencils, you can freehand it, you can do it with rub-on transfers, you can do it with stickers, but I just spelled out fall, and I did each letter a little differently. I made them proportional to the sign that it was going to be on. So next, I am weeding all of this out, and if you are a seasoned Cricut person, you are probably cringing with the way I'm doing this because I just wasted so much black vinyl, but I really did not know of any other way to do that. So 
I am just weeding it all off. And then rather than using transfer tape to put these on, I'm honestly just going to peel it off like a sticker and apply it to my board. So of course the first one I did was an F, so I just took it off just like a sticker. And then I'm going to apply it right in the middle of that first one. Now I am kind of making it a little lower on the board because we will be adding a leaf and some raffia, so I don't want to uh, you know, get in the way of that. Then I'm going to add my A. And got that right in the middle. And then my first L in the middle of the other one. And then last I have my tall skinny L. The cool thing about this is that if you do make a mistake, it's easy to peel up and move. There you go. So now I'm getting my skinny L on, pushing it all down, making sure it is all positioned correctly. Then I'm putting a coat of Mod Podge on the front. Now, you don't really have to do this, but because I'm a newer Cricut user, I just feel more comfortable putting it on. It just makes me feel better. <laughs> so I'm going to apply Mod Podge all over each one of my little signs just to protect the letters so they don't peel off. I don't think they're supposed to, but like I said, it just makes me feel better. So after that, I'm going to be using some plunger sticks to create some stems. Now you do see I have some foam brush handles there. I don't actually use those. I just use, I just have like this scrap plunger brush um, or plunger stick. So I cut them down the heights that I wanted and I did cut them at a 45 degree angle because in the original piece, they were like at an angle. So. And I did cut them different lengths and then just kind of decided which one looked best on which sign. And I am sanding these down as well because they were kind of, you know, um, ragged at the end. And now I'm going to faux stain them and I'm going to dip my, ba my baby wipe into Waverly Antique Wax and just brush all over the stems. And then once they were all faux stained, this is when I'm trying to figure out which stem looks best where. And I am going to alternate. So I'm going to put one facing the right side, just like that. And I'm just using hot glue to attach these. It works out fine. And then I'm going to have the second one, sorry about my head, facing the left. And then again, I'm just going to repeat it. This one facing the right. There we go, and then the fourth one facing the left. You can see that it's really coming out. You might have even seen this piece in Hobby, Hobby Lobby if you're an avid Hobby Lobby shopper. <laughs> All right, so next I'm gonna take some painter's tape and I'm going to take off a huge piece and then I'm going to put it down on my table. And next I'm gonna take these little leaves. Now these little leaves have clothespins on them and they are so hard to get off, but you just have to just pry it off. I mean, you could take like maybe a knife and get under there and get it, but I mean, it is a little work, but I just really wanted these to be flat. So I really worked hard to get each one of the clothespins off, but see, eventually they do come off. So next, after I had four of them taken apart, I put them on my painter's tape and this just makes it easier for them to paint. So that way they're not you know, moving around and you're not totally getting paint all over your fingers. But I just used my Christmas green paint to paint the actual leaf part and then that nutmeg brown to paint the stem. So I'm just making sure it's all painted and they all look like, I think it, I feel like it looks like lettuce here, but <laughs> you know. And then I sanded them down just so it wasn't so green and it made it look rustic. And now it's time to hot glue these to our sign. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to simply use some hot glue and I am putting them in different positions and facing different ways just to kind of change it up a little bit. There we go. And next I'm going to add a raffia bow to each one of the stems. And that's it. That completed this super cute dupe. I think this one's my favorite out of all of them because they, it just, I think it looks the closest to the original. So, and, and it was a lot of fun to do. So here is the original $17.99. Again, not bad, but when my mom asked me if I could do it, I said, sure, why not? Let's give it a try. What do you think?
For my first DIY, I'm going to start off with this summer sign. And it's like the arrow sign. So all I'm doing is pulling off the ribbon on the back. And you want to be careful because they are stapled in. And then I'm just going to take my sanding block and I'm going to sand down the holes because they were just a little rough. Now I'm gonna have to cut these down in order to make my DIY. So I'm gonna grab this knife and my little cutting board and all I'm gonna do is use one as a straight edge and then just cut off the arrow part. And I'm gonna do that to two of these boards. So as you can see, I'm using the one that I cut down as a straight edge for the other one. And all I'm doing is taking my knife and I'm scoring it a few times until it allows me to bend it back and forth and eventually break off. And then you also want to sand down the edges. After that, I took the third board and I'm just going to cut out two rectangles. Now, I do end up changing this part, but I wanted to show you that I did this because this could give you an idea on how to actually use this. But in reality, you actually want about half of that little square that I just cut. So this will make more sense as the video goes along, but I did cut off two of these squares. Now I am left with two long boards and two squares. So at first I start off hot gluing my squares at the very ends of one of the boards because we're gonna make a little box. But like I said, I do end up changing it, but I did wanna walk you through this because you can still use that third little sign to do this part. You just don't want them this wide like I had them they could really each get cut down in half. And like I said, this will all make sense in just a little bit. But I just made sure to secure them down with hot glue, and then after I had both of my sides on, I hot glued on the top. And you wanna make sure that it's all lined up and flush with each other. After that, I'm gonna take my mocha apple barrel paint, and I'm going to paint this entire thing. Next, I took these two pumpkins that I got from the Dollar Tree. This bigger one has raised little wood pieces, and then this other one is a tray. So all I need are the pumpkins from the tray. So I tried to cut them off, and I learned that if you just stick your blade in between the pumpkin and the little tray part, and then just slide down, it comes off so easily. It just breaks whatever is holding it, glue, I don't even know, but it just comes off so easily. So it is a lot easier to get off than I thought it would be. And then you just kind of bend it back and forth and break the bottom off. Then of course you wanna sand the edges so they are nice and smooth. Next, it's time to paint. So for the first pumpkin, the solid one, I painted that in my pumpkin Waverly chalk paint. For the second pumpkin, I painted that with my Moss Waverly chalk paint. Now I forgot to mention, but you probably see, that I am not painting any of the stems on any of these pumpkins because I'm going to do something different. Then for my bigger pumpkin, I'm going to paint that entire thing with the ivory chalk paint from Waverly. Hey. 
Next, I'm gonna add highlighting to all of my pumpkins. To do this, I took a really small brush and then it, my chocolate bar apple barrel paint and I just highlighted the edges. Now, I did switch to a makeup sponge because I thought that it might be easier, but you're gonna see that I kinda keep going back and forth between the two. So for this pumpkin with the little slats, I just went around them and just really just added some highlighting. I also did this same method to the bigger pumpkin and the orange pumpkin. Now for the orange pumpkin, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna take my makeup sponge and I'm gonna go around the edges and you can see that I'm really not putting a lot on and I'm using my finger to smear it and kind of blend it all in. Then for the middle, I'm just kind of creating those pumpkin lines by doing two bigger lines and then two of them in the middle. But in a little bit, you're actually gonna see that I actually kind of change this up a little bit. For the bigger pumpkin, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just going to put some paint around the edges and then use my finger to smear it and blend it in. Now, I did not put any lines in the middle of any of those slats. I just kind of traced around them on the edges, which you'll see, but I really love this method. I think it makes it look so rustic, but also it adds a lot of dimension to these pumpkins. Next to add just a little bit more detail, I took the same brush that I painted the big pumpkin with, with the ivory paint, and I just dry brushed that over my green and orange pumpkins. Then this is where I decided to change up the orange pumpkin a little bit. I have this leftover wooden egg from Easter time, so I decided to hot glue that to the middle of the pumpkin to give it that raised wood look and then I went ahead and painted that with that orange pumpkin paint and then once that's dry I'm gonna go ahead and put those highlighting lines on there now I did have to go over at the bottom where the words were it said Hobby Lobby on them I did have to go over that a few times with that paint to get it to completely cover so now I'm just adding my highlighting pumpkin lines, but I really loved at doing this because it just made it more dimensional and just kind of changed it up a little bit. And the other two pumpkins had something kind of special about them, so I felt like this needed something special too. Now for the stems, I started in the back of each pumpkin and I just simply wrapped each stem with twine. And then I'm just putting hot glue just here and there as I see fit. Now it gets a little trickier as you get to the top because it gets skinnier but you're just gonna have to use more hot glue and just kind of hold it and just work with it and then eventually you will have it covered but I did this on all three of my stems After that, I took my box and this is where I decided to change it. So the first thing I did was deconstruct it and I took it apart. So now instead of having those square pieces on the end, I am going to hot glue a Jenga piece to each end. I'm doing this because it's going to make it a skinnier, narrow box because I did not need it as big as it was. Now, if you don't have tumbling tower blocks, this is when I said you can just take those rectangles that I cut out and cut them in half and that should be about the same width. But see how much skinnier that is now? That is what I was going for in the first place. And then after I got those glued on, I just went ahead and painted those with that mocha paint.
Now it's time to assemble our piece. So the first thing I did was I added some hot glue to the back of the big pumpkin and I hot glued that to the back piece of my box. Then I hot glued a tumbling tower block on each side of the big pumpkin and hot glued my little pumpkins on top of those. Don't you love those colors together? They're so pretty. After that, I took the raffia bow that originally came on that big pumpkin and I went ahead and hot glued it to the big pumpkin. And then I hot glued a raffia bow to the orange one and I will hot glue it one to the green one. I just didn't have it made yet. <laughs> Next, I took this pack of metal words that I got from the Dollar Tree, and they do have them this year again, and I took the word harvest, and I'm going to paint that with a few coats of black acrylic paint. Now, what's really weird is that it actually kind of came out rustic, like the paint didn't really stick, but I liked how it looked. After that, I took one of the longer dowel rods and I cut just a little piece off of it because we're going to make a handle. So once I had those cut down, I went ahead and sanded the edges and then I hot glued the smaller piece on top of the longer piece to make a T look. Then I painted that with the black acrylic paint as well. After those pieces were dry, I took my word and because metal and hot glue do not mix, I'm going to use this super glue from the Dollar Tree. I think it's called the Fix All Glue or something like that. And I'm going to go ahead and add some of that for the permanent hold and then add some hot glue for the immediate hold. And I'm going to hot glue that to the front of my box. And then before I put the handle on, I need to put a Jenga piece at the bottom. So you're going to see that it actually fits right in perfectly at the bottom of my box, just fits right there, and you do want it to hang out. Then I took my mocha paint and covered that as well. I think I forgot to mention that this piece that I'm making was actually something I saw on Pinterest, and unfortunately I don't remember where it was originally from, but once I saw it, I thought it was so pretty and new. I had all the stuff to make it, so I really wanted to try. So after that, I went ahead and grabbed these mason jar lids that I had left over, and I'm going to paint the outside of the jars with black acrylic paint. Now you do need to give each one of these several coats because the acrylic paint doesn't cover over metal well, but after a couple of coats it did work. Then I took the inside of the mason jar and I'm going to flip them upside down and I'm going to trace a circle by using my paint bottle and I am going to... <laughs> My, sorry, my paintbrush broke as I was doing that. I'm gonna paint the little circle that I had traced with that mocha paint, and I'm gonna do that on both of these little lids. Next, by using that super glue and hot glue, I'm going to glue these the insides of the lids to the outsides. And of course, I'm gonna put them upside down so that way the part that I painted is facing out. Then by using my hot glue, I'm going to glue my little wheels to either end of my box. Next up, I'm going to take my little handle and I'm simply just going to glue that to the end of that little Jenga block that is sticking out. And then I did tack it down on top of the orange pumpkin to help give it extra support. After 
after that, it's time to make a stand for my little wagon. So remember those square pieces that I had? I went ahead and glued that one to each one of my wheels on the back. And I did this just to give it an extra layer of support and to add some weight on the back so it wasn't so top heavy. See how it's falling back? And then I took two Jenga blocks, I hot glued them together side by side, and then I'm going to hot glue those to the bottom of the squares. Now I do end up adding another layer of tumbling tower blocks to give it even more weight and that seemed to do the trick. Now just a little tip, when you make stands like this, you do want to, as you are placing your blocks down with the glue on, before you press down and adhere it, you do want to stand your piece up and lean it back a little bit. That way it, it's supported when it stands up. And there we go, now it's standing on its own. So now I'm gonna go ahead and make that third raffia bow. Of course they don't, this one doesn't look as good as the other ones that came from other you know, decor pieces. But I'm just gonna go ahead and hot glue that to the stem of my green pumpkin and then cut off any extra raffia. And then to add just a little bit more dimension and make it look a little bit more rustic, I'm going to take my Waverly Antique Wax and my chippy brush and just dry brush over my wagon. I absolutely love how this came out. Like I said, this was an inspiration from Pinterest and I love these colors together. I didn't think I would, but I really do. But what do you think? my second pumpkin DIY, I'm going to be using these cardboard tubes from the Dollar Tree and I have one big one with the lid on. I have the same one but I took the lid off and then this smaller one that says happy birthday. So the first thing I needed to do was take the tag off of the smaller one. So I just used my hair dryer and a scraper to go ahead and scrape it off and it came off really easily. Then I attempted to take off the tags of the other ones except for they are part of the cardboard so it's not a sticker <laughs> Next, I'm gonna paint all three of these tubes with that pumpkin Waverly chalk paint. And I did do a few coats just to make sure that the writing on this one was completely covered, but you can get away with like one and a half coats on the red ones. Once they were dry, I went ahead and hot glued the lid to one of the taller ones to make that the tallest of my pumpkins. Now, some of the glue did seep through, so I just took my finger carefully and wiped it off. After that, it is time to distress them. So I took my Waverly Antique Wax and my Chippy Brush, and I am just lightly brushing over each one of these pumpkins. Now, these red ones had kind of like a texture to them, so once I brushed this Waverly Wax, wax over it it really highlighted the texture and brought it out and it looked so neat i really loved how the distressing turned out on all three of these pumpkins Now for the stem of my pumpkins, I had these extra pieces of plunger that I cut down from other DIYs, so I just decided to use these. Ideally, I would have liked to go outside and grab some branches or sticks, but it was pouring when I was making this and I did not have time to wait. So that's just what I decided to do. Now one of my sticks was already painted brown from another DIY, so I just took a baby wipe and dipped it in my antique Waverly wax to faux stain the other two. After that, I was just deciding which stem would look best on which pumpkin, and then I just used some hot glue to go ahead and hot glue them down to the middle of my pumpkins. Hey. 
Once they were glued down, it was time to accessorize. So the first thing I added were some leaves, and I'm just cutting off some leaves from one of those garlands from the Dollar Tree, and I'm adding two leaves to each one of my pumpkins. Now, I did make sure to kind of mix up the colors of leaves so that way there weren't two of the same color. I don't know why, I just thought it looked better like that. And originally I did only have one leaf on each one of these back two pumpkins, but I do eventually add a second. So now I'm taking two different colored strands of the berry garland and I'm going to hot glue those down at the bottom of my stem and I did wrap it around. Then I'm going to take a paintbrush and I'm going to curl them to make the tendrils of my pumpkin and like I said I have two different berry garlands here. So I have an orange one and then like a, a white and green one. So I'm going to do that to all four of those little ends. And then I hot glued the back of the berry garland down as well so that way it didn't like push up. Next, I'm gonna take this really pretty gold ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to make a very simple bow and then hot glue that to the bottom part of my stem. And then I also made a raffia bow out of green raffia, so then I'm going to hot glue that to the front of my ribbon bow. And as you can see, I'm just kind of fluffing up the raffia because I like it to kind of be wild and crazy, not just like one straight bow all the way across. So I'm just kind of moving my little vines around, making sure I have it exactly how I like. And then I'm gonna take some twine and make a little twine bow and hot glue that to the front of my raffia bow. Now, I did make sure to keep my tails long on my twine bow. That way, they drape over the front of my pumpkin and it adds a little detail to the front of my pumpkin. After that, I'm gonna take these little berries that I got from Pix from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to hot glue them underneath my raffia bow. And I have like these bigger orange and red ones and then I have these like dark ones, the dark red ones. So I'm kind of using a mixture of both and just hot gluing them in. Now then I repeat that with the other two pumpkins. So I do that same thing to the other two pumpkins. So I already did one, you watched me do my second, and then here is the third. Now the third one is the shortest one and that one is going to go in the front of the other two on my display. And I'm going to show you how I actually switched this one up a little bit. So because I arranged all of my accessories the same way I'm just gonna speed right through this so as you saw I added my berry garlands and then my ribbon bow my raffia bow but before I tie my twine bow I'm gonna take a piece of twine and I'm going to wrap it around my stem and bring it underneath all of the bows and everything to the front I should have done this at first but I didn't think about it and I am gonna leave those little strings long Next, I'm going to take these wooden words that I got in a pack from the Dollar Tree, and these are new, and how stinking cute are these? So I decided to go with Welcome Fall, but I didn't really want the welcome. So I just decided to use my scissors and cut the welcome part off, and then I cut off. You can see how the line extends past the F and the L, so I just cut those off too. Sorry, I'm a little out of frame. But after I got that all cut down, I took my Waverly Antique Wax, I dipped a baby wipe in it, and then I used that as a faux stain to stain my wooden word. And then I'm going to simply tie my word on the ends of the twine that we just wrapped around the pumpkin. Now I loosely tied that on there because I wanted the word to hang in the front of my pumpkin. <laughs> then I'm 
Then I did tack the word down with some hot glue. After that, I'm gonna go ahead and make my little twine bow and hot glue that to my raffia bow. And then I'm gonna take more of these little berries and I'm going to put those underneath my raffia bow. Now, I thought that I was done, but I really felt like it needed something more in the front of that smaller pumpkin. So I took this leaf wood cutout that I had from last year and dry brushed some antique Waverly wax over it using my chippy brush. And then I added some twine and then tied that around the front of my pumpkin. So I want the word fall to hang over my leaf. So I'm just kind of arranging it how I like. And like I said, I'm going to hang it in the front. So I'm putting my piece of twine underneath all of my bows and all of the accessories and everything. So I'm just gonna tie it in the back and tack it down with some hot glue. And that completes these three little pumpkins. So now it's time to put them all on a display. Play. So I grabbed this wooden charger that I got from Michaels actually, but I know that they have them at the Dollar Tree and I simply just hot glued my pumpkins down. So I put uh, the taller one next to the middle size and then the smallest one in front of both of those. And I love how this turned out. Then I just took it a step further and accessorized the entire thing with some pine cones and some little acorns and how more fall can you get? I actually kind of think this is a little primitive as well, but it is totally rustic and totally my style and I love it what do you think For my last DIY, I'm gonna start off with this little Easter gnome that I had left over from obviously Easter. And I'm gonna use my little scraper tool to pry up the carrot that is on the gnome and the nose, but you wanna keep both of those things to the side because we will be using them. Then I realized that it was really easy to just go ahead and peel up all of that paper. So that's exactly what I did and I used my scraper to help me do that as well. After I had my paper all scraped up, I took my pencil and I just drew lines of where I wanted to cut off the little bunny ears. Then I took my knife and I scored where I drew my lines a few times until I was able to bend them back and forth and break them off. After I had them both cut off, I took my sanding sponge and I sanded both of the sides down to make them nice and smooth. After that, I'm gonna take this plaid scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby and I'm gonna Mod Podge this on the top of the hat. So rather than tracing the hat on the paper and cutting it out, I'm gonna go ahead and just apply Mod Podge and apply the paper on top. And then I'm gonna use my scissors to go ahead and cut around it. Now I'm just kinda doing like a dry cut. I'm not getting as close as I can because after that, I'm gonna take my sanding sponge and I'm going to sand the edges to make it that nice clean cut. This is your friendly reminder that if you're loving what you see today, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Not only does it really help my channel to grow, but it also tells YouTube that you're loving what you're seeing and that you want to see more. So YouTube will put more of my content in your suggested videos. So please give me a like. It would be truly appreciated. Thank you. 
after I had that all sanded down, I took my ivory chalk paint from Waverly and I went ahead and painted the beard. Now first, I did take a pencil and I outlined where I wanted the shoes to be. That way I knew not to paint those ivory because I'm gonna paint those brown in just a little bit. But I did go ahead and give this one coat of ivory chalk paint. Then I put that aside to dry and I took another one of these pumpkin trays and again by using my knife and just putting the knife in between the pumpkin and the holder, I'm just going to pry it off. Now this time I only need one pumpkin and I chose to use the solid one. Then I'm going to take my Waverly pumpkin chalk paint and I'm going to paint my pumpkin and then after that I'm going to paint my stem with the chocolate brown paint then I'm going to use that same paint to give this the highlighting pumpkin lines So to draw the lines, I'm just starting on one end and then I'm just making a curved line out and then I'm going to repeat that and do it on the inside as well. And I really love how this one was painted. I almost like this one better than the first one I did in that first DIY. I don't know why, it just looks a lot better and more realistic. But I did go ahead and outline the perimeter of my pumpkin too. And then you're going to see that I kind of dry brush that paint in between all all of the lines and I just I just really love the rustic look of this pumpkin Now, even though I don't need a carrot in this DIY, I do need those little hands. So all I'm gonna do is take my knife and just cut around. Now, I'm not trying to get every little finger. I'm just going to cut around and make it rounder at the bottom. Then again, after I get both of my hands off, I'm going to cut them down to clean them up and then I'm going to sand around the edges to make them nice and smooth. Next, I'm gonna take that chocolate brown paint and I'm gonna paint both of my little hands with that. Then while I had the paint out, I went ahead and painted his little shoes. Next, I took my black Sharpie marker and I'm just kind of drawing some wavy lines to make it look like hair. And then if it got a little dark, I just painted over it with my ivory lines. And I just kind of did this until I got the look I was going for. Now I did add the nose so that way it helped me guide where those little hair lines would be. But look how cute that is. I think it adds a lot of dimension too. Next, I'm gonna take that same gold ribbon that I used in the previous DIY, and I'm going to hot glue that onto where the paper meets his hair. So kind of like the brim of his little hat. Thank you. 
Next, I'm gonna take this canvas that I had from like a canvas board from the Dollar Tree and I'm always using just the wood from that but I always keep the canvas just in case it comes in handy and it did this time. So all I need to do is cut off four little rectangles. Then I'm gonna take a piece of twine and I'm going to glue it going across the fatter part of my pumpkin and I'm gonna hot glue it in the back. Next, I'm gonna take the little rectangles I made out of the canvas, and I realized they were just a little bit too wide, so I took two of them and cut them in half to create four pieces, and then I'm gonna fold those in half and kinda dovetail them like you would to the end of ribbons to make it look like a banner piece. And then I'm gonna do that to the other two as well. Now you can see that I have some canvas there glued to my twine. I had tried to do this and realized they were way too fat and too big and they didn't fit and then I had to pull them off. So then once I had them all cut down, I went ahead and hot glued them onto the twine to create a little banner. Next, I'm gonna take my little hands and I'm going to hot glue those to my little banner as well. After that, I hot glued my pumpkin to my gnome and I put the pumpkin all the way at the bottom of my gnome, kind of so it was covering his little feet. Next, I took his little nose and I just dry brushed some of that chocolate brown paint or chocolate bar paint on it just to add a little bit of highlighting and dimension and I kind of just went around the perimeter. And then I went ahead and hot glued his nose in the middle of that ribbon. Next, I did decide to go ahead and tack down the little banner pieces, that way they didn't flip up. Next, by using that chocolate bar paint again, I went ahead and went around the edges of the hat to give that some highlighting as well and to make it look a little bit more rustic. Then I went over those banner pieces to make those look a little bit more rustic too. Next, I decided I needed to add something to his hat, so I took this little leaf wood cutout, and it does have a clothespin on the back, so I did have to pry that off. It did take me a minute to get this off, I am gonna be honest, but I just took my knife and did the same thing. I just kinda slid it back behind the clothespin and just broke it off, but you do wanna be very, very careful not to break off the stem of the leaf. After I got the clothespin off, I just faux stained it by dipping a baby wipe in my Waverly Antique Wax. Now, I did start off with only one of these leaves, but in a little bit, you're gonna see that I actually add a second. So now I'm just kinda deciding where I wanna put it, and I am just gonna place it at the top of my hat for now. Then I took a piece of twine and I'm gonna make a little twine bow and I'm going to hot glue that to the bottom of the stem of my pumpkin. Next, I'm gonna take these black sticker letters that I got from the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna spell out fall, putting one letter on each pendant of my banner. Then to secure my stickers down, I'm gonna put a layer of Mod Podge over them.
Then here's where I decided to add that second leaf. So I went ahead and faux stained that as well. And the cool thing is, is that this one actually turned out a little darker than that first one. So there is a little contrast between the two. So then I just decided where I wanted to put them and I put them at the top of my hat and layered them on top of each other. Next, I took a piece of twine and I looped it to make a little hanger for the back. I thought this little gnome came out so adorable. This was actually kind of a dupe from something I saw from the Lakeside collection. I get that magazine and I absolutely love looking through it. Every time I get it, they have some wonderful home decor ideas. And when I saw it, I knew I could probably recreate it. And I'm so happy I did and I cannot wait to display this this fall. What do you think? For my next DIY, I decided I was going to make a big sign to place on top of the mantle. So I got this wood cupboard door um, a while ago at a local, local grocery store and they were two for 99 cents. Yes, you heard that right. Two for 99 cents, it's crazy. But so obviously I picked up a ton. So all I'm gonna do is give the inside of this door a good coat of plaster chalk paint from Waverly. Now at first you can see I'm just um, painting the inside and now I'm gonna go through with some painter's tape and tape off the edges because I'm actually going to stain like the little frame around it. So I did want to tape this off so I didn't get any of that plaster uh, paint on that but I could not believe the deal that I got with these and they have come in handy so much. If you watched my if you watched my um, front porch decorating video, that big long welcome sign also came from that grocery store and that was also that one might have been 99 cents, but these doors right here are two were two for 99 cents and I hope that they bring them back because oh my goodness, I would love to stock up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and painting, paint, finish painting this plaster. And I'm making sure to get in all the corners. And I just wanna point out my surface here. I'm really sorry that to the right, or to the left, you can see my trash can and then the mess. But that is all I have to work with because the desk is so small. So I apologize, but this is just the only angle I could get so you could see what I'm doing. So after that plaster paint dried, I took my ruler and we're just going to go ahead and make those shiplap lines that you know I love. So I just put a, I just drew a line on the top of the ruler and the bottom and now I'm just going to go through and do the same thing all the way down and then all the way to the top. So I pretty much do this to everything because I just love that look and I love that shiplap look. It's funny because I'm not farmhouse at all but I do love that look. All right, then to make it look a little bit more rustic, I am taking my finger and I'm just smudging my pencil lines. That way it all blends in. And I really love using this method to make the faux shiplap. I think it just looks so good. And then after that, I'm gonna take my Waverly Antique Wax and my chippy brush, and I am simply going to dry brush some of that wax all over my cupboard except for the, of course, the taped off part. <laughs> so I'm just dry brushing. I am making sure to pay attention to the little ledges there. See how it got little dark, a little darker? So I am paying attention to the edges so they are um, darker, so they're highlighted more. And then I'm gonna go in between right there to um, that way it adds a little color and dimension and makes it look rustic around there too. So obviously I love using antique wax on everything. <laughs> That's just my color. Some people distress with black, some people distress with gray. Mine is definitely this wax, the brown, for sure. All right, so now I'm gonna go through and use my sanding block to sand everything down to help it all blend in. And also it brought, 
out the natural wood from underneath and I really loved that look too. Next, I'm going to take this pack of Decorate Your Own Pumpkin Ornaments from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to pick out five. And right now, I'm just kind of arranging how I want them to look, and then I'm going to pick the colors I want. So I'm just laying it out, kind of testing it. And then in a minute, I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to write the color that I want on each one. So for this sign, we are going to use the colors white, moss and pumpkin all chalk paints from Waverly. So I am going to paint two of these pumpkins with the moss chalk paint, one pumpkin with the pumpkin chalk paint and two pumpkins with the white chalk paint. So here we go, I'm gonna go ahead and do my two moss and then I will paint the others. Now, I did decide halfway through that I did want to cover those holes. I actually knew I wanted to do that but forgot before I started painting. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now and I'm going to fill in all the holes and then sand it down and then continue to paint all of my pumpkins. I just want to take this opportunity to welcome you to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, thank you so much for choosing to stop by today. I really hope that you love what you see and choose to stick with me for a while by subscribing to my channel. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you love what you see. If you're returning, thank you so much for all of your love and support. You know that you are amazing and I appreciate all of you. And again, please leave me, please leave me comments because I am going through and trying to reply, but I know that I am so behind. I apologize about that, but you guys just keep, please keep commenting because I love reading all of your comments. So thank you so much for your support and I can't wait to share with you even more DIYs. All right, so now I'm gonna paint my last pumpkin white. And like I said, I did two moss, two in the pumpkin orange, or I'm sorry, two moss, one in the pumpkin orange and two white. Now I'm going to take my nutmeg uh, apple barrel paint and I'm just going to simply paint all of my stems. And I just used this same paint on, or the same color paint on all of them. That way I had nice coverage on the stems. I really love these colors together. Look how good that looks. I'm really loving these three colors together. All right, so after all my pumpkins were dry, I'm going to take a really small detail brush, dip it in my antique wax, and I'm just going to make those pumpkin lines. And you know, if you've been following me for a while, that I do this on all the pumpkins. It's nothing new. I mean, I learned from YouTube <laughs> how to do this. So all I'm doing is just making those curved lines. And you can see the little bumps at the bottom. I'm just, that's just the guide I'm using. And then I'm also going to go around the peri perimeter <laughs> and then also hit in the middle of each of the pumpkins too. And I'm gonna do this to every single one of those pumpkins. So this is so easy to do. And I think that this detail brings these pumpkins to life and makes it look even more realistic. So I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna do this on all of the pumpkins. You're gonna have to let me know down in the comments when you decorate for fall, if you decorate for fall, what colors do you do? Are you just very neutral and farmhouse? Do you do the traditional colors? Do you do blues? What colors are you decorating with this fall? I feel like anything goes anymore and there's not really an in style. I feel like there's such a big percentage to do the, the traditional like me. And then there's such a big percentage to do the neutral that just kind of throw in, you know, pump beige, maybe beige pumpkins or neutral color decor. So let me know what you're doing. Okay, so after all my pumpkin lines are drawn, I'm gonna go through and just sand them all down to help it all blend in. I really think that this helps a lot too. It doesn't make the lines look so bold. Okay, so after that, I'm gonna take my cupboard door and I'm going to peel off all the tape. And this time I'm going to take that paint, or sorry, tape, and I'm gonna tape over where I painted because we are going to stain the frame of this door. So I'm just replacing all of my tape now. And then to stain it, I'm just gonna use my Waverly Antique Wax and I'm going to take a baby wipe and just dip it in the wax and just rub it on and it was easy as that. And I am gonna make sure to get the edges, the sides, the tops, the bottoms, all of it. 
So I'm just gonna go through and faux stain this entire frame. Now I couldn't decide if I wanted to, see how the left side is kind of darker and the right side is kind of lighter? I couldn't decide which I liked better. So you're gonna have to let me know in the comments which one you like. Do you like it darker or do you like it lighter? <laughs> or do you not see a difference? But look at that natural wood grain that this wax is bringing out. It's so pretty. All right, next we're gonna take off all the tape to reveal my, my stained frame. And then I'm going to get this decal that I made for my Cricut. Now, if you don't have a Cricut, that's okay. You can use rub-on transfers, stickers, um, stencils, anything that you have that you can do letters. And I just found this on Cricut Design Space, but I, it did say welcome to our patch. Or no, I'm sorry, it said welcome to our home. But I took out the home and because I only wanted welcome to R. So now I'm just gonna go through and weed everything. So basically I'm taking out all the negative parts, the parts that shouldn't be there. And then I'm going to put my transfer paper on it. And as you can see, I took those pumpkins again and I lined them up at the bottom. So before I go ahead and put my my uh, words down, I made sure to have my pumpkins lined up. Now my pumpkins are not glued at this point. So now I just went through and I'm push, I'm um, transferring it to the tr to the transfer paper, and now this will be easy for me. This transfer paper gave me such trouble because I reused it like a hundred times. <laughs> so needless to say, that was the last time because look how I really have to work with it. Okay, so now I'm going to line up my pumpkins again because they obviously kind of moved, and make sure that they are perfect in how I want them, and then I'm going to, sorry about my head, I had to get right on top of this so I could see, <laughs> um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put my words down. So I'm just positioning it, making sure. I did end up cutting off the bottom because it was just easier for me to tell what I was doing. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put my words down and I'm gonna use that little tool to scrape it on. Let me know in the comments, do you have a Cricut? If you've been following me for a while, you know that I just got mine and I believe it was July, I just saw a good deal. I'd never had a Cricut before and I saw a good deal on Amazon and I decided to go for it and I'm telling you what, I every day sit here and think why did I not do this years ago, years ago? I was intimidated for nothing. It is so easy to use. I've made so many projects with it already, and oh, I just I just love it. It really ups your game in DIYs, I think. Okay, so after I got my words on, I went ahead and hot glued my pumpkins down. Now you can see that I have them overlapping each other, and that orange one in the middle is right on top. So now I just hot glue them to each other and now I'm going to glue down the ones that are actually going to touch the board to the uh, door. All right, now that they're all glued down, I'm gonna take these poster letters that I got from the Dollar Tree and I am just going to spell out patch and I'm going to put one letter on each pumpkin. I really love how this came out. I can't wait for you to see it. So I'm just going to put all of my letters on and my H. And I mean, this these letters would be perfect to do this whole sign with. So you don't even have to have a Cricut. But I have an abundance of these letters because I just got my Cricut. So this is what I you know used to use. So after those were all down, I'm just kind of checking it out, making sure I like it. And I decide that I did. So that makes this project complete. Ooh, well, that completes 10 fall DIYs from last year. I hope you really enjoyed all of these. Let me know in the comments which one was your absolute favorite and if you'll be trying any of these. And don't forget, I'm going to be coming at you with more new fall DIYs. So definitely hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. I would truly appreciate it. Well, until I see you again, I'll craft with you soon. Bye!